Hello, everyone, and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. We're glad that you've joined us today, and I hope that you'll take time to share this out on your social media. I believe it's some information that people need to know. And then, of course, the upcoming Prophecy Files Conference is going to happen this coming weekend on Saturday morning and Sunday morning. You will not want to miss. We'll bring you more information about that in a moment. But first, uh, here is today's Prophecy Files Briefing dealing with this article, Beyond Parity. It says, NPR, National Public Radio, reports that eco-chaplains are helping people process their climate grief. The article contained with some information that I think it would be important for you to hear. National Public Radio has a new story out this week about eco-chaplains who are apparently tasked with helping people work through their climate grief, whatever that is, the article says. This is the important thing I want you to note. It says in this article, a new spiritual movement is growing, one designed to help people deal with their negative feelings about the planet being threatened by climate change. He goes on to say, dubbed eco-chaplains, these novel spiritual leaders are being trained to meet a growing need to address grief, anxiety, and burnout over environmental problems. Uh, the article goes on to say that the report noted how eco-chaplaincy is a 21st century invention with less than 100 people believed to be practicing in the Western world. Multiple organizations have begun to train individuals in a type of ecotherapy from Buddhist to Christian to Jewish and secular perspectives. Well, it is now, uh, and it has been coming for a number of years, uh, way back when, uh, probably in the 70s, whenever they started talking about Earth Day and the uh, lifting up of the earth and the climate and dealing with all that's going on. And now we've reached a place that the Bible said uh, many, many thousands of years ago that would actually take place when uh, men and mankind would turn their worship toward the creation more than the creator. We'll deal with that in a moment because environmentalism has certainly become a religion. And by all practical uh, applications. The people now in mass are worshiping Mother Earth and they scoff at God the Father. But because mankind is created in the image of God and God meant for man and uh, man and woman to be in the privileged place above all other created beings, uh, that's where God gave to them the exercised judgment and stewardship of the earth. The Bible says in Genesis, he gave this dominion over the earth. That's important for us to understand. Problem is, is that the church has now jumped into this in several uh, past years, as you've seen, where uh, noted pastors uh, that are in the evangelical world, for that matter, have actually jumped in on the climate change uh, uh, whole issue and made it a point of uh, religious necessity and and for us to be able to have a clearer understanding and take care of the planet. It has shifted the focus from the God-called evangelism of mankind to now the worship of the earth. So 25 years ago, they jumped on the climate change bandwagon, and the National Association of Evangelicals featured a push to recycle and the emphasis uh, that uh, they say the Bible says concerning um, environmentalism, claiming that we were killing the planet. Well, I want you to understand the, what the Word of God has to say. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. In other words, God is going to be having the last word concerning when the end of this world will be. And it will not be until God says it, and it's very clearly outlined in the Word of God. You can find the references to these things in the book of Genesis, the book of Psalm, the book of Matthew, and multiple other passages of Scripture. This is important for you to understand because even now there is a call for in the National Association of Evangelicals recently a new Ten Commandments for climate change and the repenting, listen to this, to repent from climate sins. They're calling it a new covenant, a covenant between man and creation. So God's stewardship uh, over the earth is that man has dominion and we are to take care of the earth and not abuse the earth. That's what the Bible has to say. But we are to intellectually manage uh, the resources God has given to us and uh, use the care that God has given to us to take care of the planet according to the scripture. 
But in the frame that is happening right here with now the elevation of creation over the creator, according to Romans chapter number one, we're seeing the fulfillment of 2 Thessalonians 2, where the Bible says he's turning uh, people's minds over to a strong delusion that they would believe a lie and be damned, according to the scripture. Here's what the Bible says in Romans chapter one, verse number 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are not without excuse. In other words, it is God who created all things, and it is by him that all things are created and for him. Verse 21, because that when they knew not God, talking about now the last day uh, masses of people, because when they knew, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And here's the key that I'm talking to you about today. And changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And here's the, here's the real crux of this entire passage. Verse 25 says, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Some churches are going to go along with this in such a degree that it will become their new worship uh, mantra, if you will. And we've shifted from the evangelism of the souls of mankind to trying to preserve and help the climate and elevating it above the creator who made it. This is just one more sign of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can assure you, my friends, that this is some of the last signs of the last day that we are seeing even right now. I would encourage you more than ever before, seek the word of God, pray earnestly, and stay connected to the word of God and the fellowship of other believers in a Bible-believing church, a spirit-filled church. This is a time when we need to be prepared and looking for the imminent return of Jesus Christ. And until we get together again right here on Prophecy Files Briefing, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.